Today, we'd like to talk about Dun Laoghaire. Philosophers have often summarised Dun Laoghaire as Beer Ritz at the front, Bombay at the back. Dun Laoghaire is the only place name in Ireland that doesn't have an English translation, and as a result, nobody in Dun Laoghaire actually knows how to speak English. Dun Laoghaire has more abandoned shops in it than it does dry robe wearing Covid sea swimming Black Rock College graduates aggressively flaunting their gratitude on Instagram at 5.30 in the morning. The entire economy of Dun Laoghaire is kept alive by this corner shop. This shamanic temple graces spiritual nourishment upon all the native Dun Laoghaireans. The leader of this temple, John, has ascended beyond the human realm and no longer needs sleep. This shop is open 24-7. No one's ever seen John leave or enter the shop. He simply stands behind the till and waits. John loves the art of the sale so much that he'll even sell you something that doesn't exist yet. The pier is one of Dun Laoghaire's most popular attractions. Dun Laoghaireans say if you didn't kick the lighthouse at the end of the pier, you never walked along the pier. Unfortunately, this means if you have no legs, the pier is not the place for you. Unless you have excellent upper body strength and you can crawl across the pier like a turtle. It's believed that the lighthouse at the end of the pier is actually an intelligent life form and although you'd never hear it over the sounds of the crashing waves, every time it gets kicked it makes a noise that sounds like <coughs> Nobody ever dares travel the barren wasteland of the West Pier. The city council cleared this desolate landmass of all human activity so Ryan Tuberty could walk along it in peace. But this political manoeuvre has defeated its purpose because now, if someone ever wants to bump into Ryan Tuberty, all they have to do is go to the West Pier and he'll be the only one there. The church wall is an infamous landmark in Dun Laoghaire. It's a mystical time portal where the marginalised Dun Laoghaire blow-ins go to get hammered. This is the only place in South Dublin where you'll find the successful matrimony between alcoholism and religion. The church wall is where you'll find God in the end of the next can of Linden Village. He's got to be in here somewhere. The government installed a methadone clinic in Dun Laoghaire for two main reasons. The first, to replace the street drugs addicts are using with government endorsed drugs that are more damaging and harder to come off. And also, the dispatched service users from the inner city into Dun Laoghaire to remind the well off Dun Laoghaireans of how lucky they really are compared to people that are dying right in front of them. The 40 foot used to be a secluded sanctuary on the Dun Laoghaire Harbour before it turned into a hotbed of coronavirus. The 40 foot is actually 37 feet tall, but they rounded it up to 40 because that was the average age of the struggling fathers trying to bond with their sons while having an identity crisis at the same time. The 40 foot is full of people you'd never want to know in real life. And if now you're questioning whether or not you know anyone that swims in the 40 foot, don't worry, they never shut the fuck up about it. Dun Laoghaire is powered by the most influential cult in the world. Is it Scientology? No, it's Scrum Diddly's. Get out! Scrum Diddly's put a secret ingredient in their ice cream that makes people queue up outside the shop for two hours for a 99 with a gummy bear in it. This social process is called Scrum Diddification, or getting Scrum diddly Dun Laoghaire is home to a lot of local Irish talent. Much to his dismay, Ronnie Drew was actually from Dun Laoghaire, which, if we're to consider Dun Laoghaire and Dublin as two separate entities, which they're not, means Ronnie Drew is from Dun Laoghaire, which also means Ronnie Drew was from Dublin all along. Bob Geldof is also from Dun Laoghaire, but nobody really cares. The skater kids of Dun Laoghaire love to wear ripped jeans, because buying jeans that were ripped when they bought them allows them to block the shame they feel about living in a rich family. Yet. When the natives of Tala come down to the pier during the summer, the Dunlarian skaters shrivel up and retract into the protective shell of their Canterbury hoodies. The Dunleary shopping centre is all business on the ground, first and second floor, and then on the third floor it's a vast expanse of empty space due to the formation of a black hole that appeared inside the shopping centre in the late 90s. This sucked all the businesses on the third floor into its gaping vortex, all bar Peter Marks, who somehow escaped the spaghettification of Dun Laoghaire in space time because they sell hair straighteners and no one's bought a hair straightener since 2009. This spaceship fell out of the starry Dun Laoghaire sky one night and while most have come to perceive it as a library, it's more commonly known as the Death Star of South Dublin. It's always empty and costs the taxpayer 48 million that could have been spent on housing, but now they have a spaceship instead. 
O'Loughlin's is the oldest pub in Dunleary. Nobody ever goes in there, except for the people that do go in there. They all go in there. The lights are always off, the shutters are down and they don't have a cash register. O'Loughlin's is often referred to as the Schrodinger's cat of Dunlearian pubs. Dunleary has reached its peak of civil unrest and I, obviously, am the only one who can restore equilibrium to this tangled web of postcodes. It's time to emancipate Dunleary and its surrounding clusters. Dunleary, no longer shall you exist solely to give the people of Sally Noggin, Glasthill, Monkstown and Sandy Cove imposter syndrome whenever they pretend to be from Dunleary on a night out in the city centre. Sally Noggin isn't actually in Dunleary. If it was in Dunleary, it'd just be called Dunleary. Namaste.